Thurman T.C. Lee, Jr., 1956, Harry Coit Johnson, Walter H. Withers, Jr., Douglas J. Trainum, 59, Robert B. Durst, Hugh A. Bulsey, Jr., 1960, Cornell H. Rookie Westbrook, 1961, Richard G. Red Newman, Sr., James Martin Talbot, in the class of 62, Richard A. Johns III, Alvy James Dorrington, 1963, Edward J. Coys, Jr., 65, Robert D. Walton, from the class of 70, Edward William Bill Parkins, Jr., 1972, William Adamite, Sr., 76, Roger Mullis, our longtime doctor, Dr. William G. Painter, Jr., and our educator and coach, G. William Bill Ralph. You too? Oh, yeah. 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 I, I got time in my pocket, otherwise <laughs> I'm worthless. I didn't know Bill had much. I was going to be totally honest. By the drum. Adela, pírale. We appreciate the participation today of the Confederate reenactors. You have made this ceremony very special. Please be sure to visit our Confederate encampment in front of the big barracks to see how the Southern soldiers lived in the field a century and a half ago. And also be sure to attend the luncheon in the gym where I found where the, where the founder of Longstreet Corps Confederate reenactors, the late Charlie Hillsman, from the class of 1971 will be honored, and where Dr. Mary DeCritico from the United States Ma Naval Academy will describe what Professor Rolla saw when he came home from the valley after Affirmatix. We are honored to have Dr. DeCritico as a trustee of the AMA Foundation. We thank the pipe and 
the pipe, fife, and drum corps under the direction of Hunter Desper for their inspiring music today. And we thank Bud Oakley from the class of 1970, whose rendition of Taps was memorable. But color Guard, retire the colors. This concludes our program. Thank you all for coming. Please uh, return to the campus where lunch will begin shortly. something we gotta have. Well, Nick, well, he guys, was on the horse. He, yeah. he ran away. Uh, you know, get here to Gus. Same that they're using out here. Right out of Marty's manual of arms. It's a confederate who uh, put the manual of arms together.
space for us. So yeah. you were coming up. Mike McGuire. weapons to make sure that they're clean, there's nothing down in the board, then they'll be asked to prime and shoot that primary. I will be the small pop boys here and there. And what that does, that makes sure that the, the nipple is clear. The primer is the igniter of the black powder. The black powder's igniter when that primer goes off and it sends a jet of flash flashing material down through that nipple and it ignites the black powder. Different about black powder and modern powder. Modern powder is called smokeless powder. This is pure black powder. It's great clouds of smoke. And you'll see that when they do fire. This is one of the things we do every time before we go into a reenactment to also to keep our boys safe. It is a hobby we do, but it's a hobby that could be dangerous. So we take great and, and Colonel Seropolis is, is, is uh, he is in charge of safety and ordinance for the Long Street School. And that is his primary responsibility is to make sure these weapons are, are, are in proper working order and are safe. When we're doing reenactments, people get lost in the heat of the battle and what have you. It's a precautionary battle. We don't have bayonets drawn. Also, we don't allow them full ramrods. Because in the heat of the battle, men have forgotten to pull the ramrod back out of the weapon and shot the weapon off, sending the ramrod down, down, down range. There's also documented uh, evidence of uh, soldiers having loaded four or five shots into their muskets, getting lost in the heat of the battle, just keep loading, keep loading, thinking they're shooting. Four or five loads in there. When they fired that, it would explode. It would probably kill them and the next two guys next to them. Wow. So, in order to cut all that down, we keep it in the simplest form. Uh, no, just powder down the barrels, no water, nothing at all. No ramming or anything. No, you only needed the rammer to push the, the lead ball down into the, into the barrel. So, we don't have that. We don't need that. It's a precautionary matter. Uh, the, the Inevitably, uh, people decide to change history. Okay? <laughs> you know, Yankees are supposed to get shot, don't get shot. Confederates are supposed to get shot, don't get shot. You're supposed to push here, no push comes. You know, a lot of things happen and people just mess up. And we're just playing, so you can imagine in the heat of a battle. The other thing is communications. Yeah, think about it, there's no radio or anything. How am I going to tell on the right across the street over here with the barns on? How, how am I going to tell that guy to move his flank up? Well, what we had was a wigwag system with flags. That was a, a, something that began in the Civil War, his flag system. So we would have a flag, a signal for a flag in here, so we could shatter the bone. The only thing you could do with that is amputation. Because they would cut off a limb, throw the next body on the table, basically just 
pour water on the on the table to wash it off. And that's it. There's no idea of sterilization, mopping off, cleaning up this and that. Uh, there's a battle at uh, Sailors Creek, which is Charlie Hillsman's homestead. His his great grandfather's house 